welcome to All The Things TV, where we discuss full living and goal getting with the grace and gifts God gives. I'm Tiffany Jo Baker, and today I have with me Sarah Darby. Sarah, thanks so much for joining me. I'm so excited to be here with you, Tiffany. Well, y'all, I get super excited when um, I get to meet somebody who's local. Um, if you've been listening, like God is just really leading me into a season of just pouring into and expanding relationships here in the Metroplex. And so I was so happy to come across Sarah and what she's doing and for God to just cross our path. So let me tell you all a little bit about Sarah and who she is if you don't already know her. So she's an entrepreneur, a mom, and a lover of Jesus and people. She's a singer, study commercial music. Y'all know how I go. I try to sing, but it doesn't really happen. She had dreams of working in the music business, but after battling cancer at the age of 23, God had different plans and her dreams changed. So she returned to Dallas in 2009, opened her own voice and music studio, and her and her team of coaches have worked with thousands of clients, helping them to grow in their skill and to do all that God's created them to do. So she uses her successful entrepreneurial experience as well as the difficult things she's overcome to help women become more peaceful, productive, and profitable. Oh, I love that. That's amazing, Sarah. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, I absolutely. have so many questions, um, but awesome. I know you are obviously an entrepreneur, a go-getter, a multifaceted mom. Wore, I mean, lots of hats. I mean, you sing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're a business <laughs> owner, you coach, you teach, you train. Um, I found some really interesting stats. So it says a stay at home mom wage would be $113,000 for their 95 hours a week of work. Wow. I think it's kind of low for 95 <laughs> hours a week. I do too. But I think 95 hours a week is really high. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> uh, another one says a working mother puts in a working mother puts in 58 hours at home and should be compensated $67,000 a year plus her salary from her nine to five. Like, yes, and all the working moms say yes. 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 Amen. Amen. And then the third one is moms with a full time job spend 13 hours working at the office or at home on family stuff. Wow. I Absolutely. I, I believe know. that. I believe all of that's true and accurate. I 100% I agree. And, I mean, and that's why just, we're tired. That's why we're tired. And that's why a lot of us are suffering from exhaustion and burnout and just feeling weary, you know, I exactly. think especially in this season. So I really wanted to, to talk with you about how do we recover from exhaustion and burnout mm -hmm. and get to that place where we have something to give. So why is mm -hmm. this like a topic that, that you want to talk about or feel called to talk about? Yeah. Um, because number one, I've experienced it in several different seasons, but definitely in the last nine months since the beginning of 2020 and it's resonating with so many other women. So many people are feeling the exact same thing, whether you work outside the home or not, whether you um, have a family or not, it really doesn't matter. People, there's just a heaviness and a weight that we are carrying right now. Um, and I think it is complicated by the effects of a global pandemic that nobody has ever navigated before, but it's not exclusive to a global pandemic. It's, there's a lot of different things, um, but certainly today in 2020, we are exhausted and you use the word weary. I think that's the that's an even better word because it's not the same as being tired. Mm -hmm. It's not like I need a nap and I'll feel mm -hmm. better. Um, a nap might make me feel better for the next couple of hours, but that isn't the cure. That's not, that's not what I need. There's something more. I'm like bone tired. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I can't think about anything else. I am just so tired. Yeah. Um, I felt that. Go ahead. I think you hit it when you said um, the weight or carrying a yeah. weight. So it's not just the external, like the, the tiredness. It's something definitely right. more deep than that. So how do we know when we're exhausted? 
Mm, great question. <laughs> um, I, I, this is something that, um, let me just pre preface this by saying, um, this has been a difficult year for me personally, navigating some personal challenges and, and brand new things that um, I wasn't prepared for and I wasn't expecting. And then COVID um, and then the, how that's complicated my personal life and my business life and just all the things. It's just been a huge interruption. But even before, even at the very beginning of that, what I felt at the beginning of 2020 was that I, in fact, as I, as I brainstormed goals for the year, um, there were several things that were all connected to rest um, and like travel, adventure, that kind of thing. But the phrase that I wrote down uh, January 1st was rest as a lifestyle, mm. not just like some self-care occasionally, but like a lifestyle of rest and cultivating rest. Um, so fast forward, getting close to the summer, and I started just not totally intentionally, but it, this amazing way that it worked out. I had several trips lined up. Um, the first was with a friend. The next was with my girls. The next was by myself. I went traveled internationally twice Nice. Um, the next was with a friend. I'm about to go to Mexico again next month. Um, I haven't traveled in years. And then all of a sudden I've gone on six vacations in one year. Wow. Um, but a cup, I know, right? So you hear that and you think, oh, wow, that must be amazing. Um, but what was weird is that I came back from a second trip to Mexico um, feeling exhausted. And it wasn't like, you know, vacation tired, sure. But like, I thought, this is so odd. Why do I still feel stuck? I still feel unmotivated. I just wrote a course about productivity. <laughs> I coach women in this. I'm feeling like I don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Hi, I've, I have rested and rested and rested and rested. So it's something different. There's something else going on here. And I said, God, I really need some insight about this because I don't want to go through another day um, feeling completely unmotivated and unproductive because that's not what I'm about. And that's not what you've called me to. I know that's not it. So get curious. And that's what I've, I've um, really learned that when I'm feeling something for more than like a day or two, I need to get really curious about it. So it's been several days of like, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. So um, what God really gave me insight about was exhaustion. And this is the insight that I believe that the Lord gave me. Um, the, the number one thing is how do we recognize that we're exhausted? And we're talking about that weariness, not like that. I need a nap. Right. Um, some of those symptoms could be that you feel stuck, uninspired, unmotivated. Um, you notice that you're just doing the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. Um, here's a good one. You feel triggered when you see other people resting or you see other people vacationing, if that triggers you, you're probably mm -hmm. exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, if you find yourself saying, oh, must be nice. Yeah. Good for them. I could never do that. Wish I could do that. You know, you're probably yeah. exhausted. Um, or if you just feel sad or a little bit depressed. And of course, I'm not talking about clinical depression. I'm talking about just like, I don't feel like myself. Yeah. Um, that, those are great indicators for me, at least, that there's something else going on and that I need a major shift and a major reset. Hmm. That's so good. What's the source of this exhaustion and weariness? Mm -hmm. Can we generalize it or what, what do you think for, especially for women? Um, yes. What, why? Why? Okay. So um, I, you've taught on this and I've seen um, you, your podcast about core values. And this is something that's really, um, I'm really passionate. This is part of my peaceful productivity course too. Um, understanding, naming your core values. So many people go through life and they've never actually made a decision about or recognized what it is that, that they value. And these are your core values are um, the words that you live and die by. This is what you want to pass down to your children. This is what you want to be known for. I think nine out of 10 people, if you said, what are your core values would just stare at you blankly. They have no idea. So, Number one, why am I exhausted, um, is I believe living outside of our core values. And that is um, commitments that don't line up with our core values. Yeah. Relationships that don't line up with our core values. Jobs that don't line up with our core values. Mm -hmm. um, 
anything like that. I mean, that's, that could be uh, an entire episode, you know, just about core values, but exhaustion is like, I am this, my life right now is not in alignment with who Mm -hmm. God has called me to be or, um, what I believe in because something is, uh, core values are our boundaries. Also, Mm -hmm. it's a, creates a parameter for life wholehearted living and when we live outside of that it is exhausting sometimes we've been living outside of our core values maybe our whole life and at some point it catches up and you realize I feel so not like I feel like a shell of a person Mm -hmm. and it's as simple as naming what I believe in um, what matters to me Mm -hmm. and making decisions using that as a filter for what you say yes and no to Mm -hmm. we could um kind of along the same lines, exhaustion is caused by saying yes to the wrong things. So if you don't know, if you don't have a filter like core values or a vision for your life, then you can say easily say yes to everything that sounds good. And it's some, it's somebody else's best. Yes, but it's not your best. Yes. And it's exhausting. Um, we can be exhausted from overworking, um, from striving for too long, just a period of intense, can't quit, can't stop, got to do it better, can't take a break, somebody else is going to get ahead. Um, That's a lot, it's really common for women who are trying to, um, who are entrepreneurs or launching something. We just feel like we can't possibly stop because we'll get behind. Um, Information overwhelm. Hmm. that's that's a huge trigger for exhaustion when we're processing just imagine how much information we're processing all day every day yeah. especially if you spend any amount of time like on social media or watching the news or or on the internet at all there's an abundance of information and it's conflicting information so we're trying to decide what's true and what do i what am i how do i respond that's a big one like yeah. so i just read this thing now what do i do with that I mean, do I make a different life choice? Do I do something different for my children? It's just, is it even real? I'm is this tired a source? You know, like, to you. Uh, I'm like, oh my because, gosh, yes, we're going through yes. all of this. How am I and, still standing? I don't even right. know. <laughs> and people that we respect deeply are telling us different things. And so sorting through that is absolutely exhausting. Um, I mentioned a second ago, navigating a global pandemic for the first time. It's exhausting. Mm-hmm. Um, making uh, pivoting in life, like constantly having to adjust our plans in life, family, business is exhausting. Um, wanting everybody to be happy with my decisions is exhausting. And I could go on and on and on and on. Um, there's a number of reasons why we're exhausted. And if you just think about it and you can, you could come up with your own list of 20 reasons Mm -hmm. why you're exhausted. Wow. This is so, um, so relevant. And so Mm -hmm. where society at large is, and whether they admit it or not, um, we're just overwhelmed and overloaded. And like you said, we right. don't, you know, our eyes might have the glasses with the blue light filter, but yeah. our mind may not have, and our heart and our spirit and soul might not have the filter that it needs to yes. wade through um, all the things that are coming at us and our children um, during this season. So, I'm, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a friend, Mm -hmm. I'm a daughter, I'm a um, business owner, I'm an employee, I'm a volunteer, you know, we all could say all the hats that we wear, all the hours that we put in, all the salary we should be making. Right. And I'm exhausted or I'm weary. So the woman who is saying that right now, what would you say to them on how do they navigate? What do they do? And how do they deal with this, this type of exhaustion? Absolutely. I think there's a couple of really practical things that we can all do starting right this second. The first one is to identify your core values. If you haven't ever done that, it's really simple. Give yourself a little bit of quiet time to think about what is really important to me. So mine are, um, and, and this could look, it could be complete sentences. There's no rules here. It can be just a, a single word. It can be phrases, sentences, a paragraph, whatever. So my core values include living with vulnerability, authenticity, intentional parenting, and resilience. So um, Tiffany and I are also going to talk about 
um, how to recover from disappointment in life. And that's it. That's a, that has a, become a value to me. And something I want to pass down to my children is um, how to bounce back when yes, difficult back things happen. Up. Yes. Right. So that's an example of my core values, but it, it's what is your life about? If you're a person of faith, then, um, then the Bible outlines for us some your core values will be connected to your faith. They'll be connected to what the Bible says too, but um, name your core values. I would say like up to five things that are really, really important that you want to be known for and that you want your kids to know about life and about how to live and how you hope that they're going to live as well. Um, name your core values and post them somewhere. And based on that information, take an honest look at your life and your commitments, your, um, your relationships, um, the work that you do and see if anything jumps out at you. Is there anything I'm doing that just doesn't, it's not even aligned with this. And how do I feel about eliminating that from my life? How does that make me feel? And it probably would make you feel lighter and happier, just the thought of it. So that's number one is name your core values and put them somewhere that you can see them. And that will keep you in check. That becomes your new filter. Um, the next thing would be to get back to the basics and ruthlessly eliminate anything kind of goes along with core values, but ruthlessly eliminate anything that doesn't fit anymore based on the new information that you have. What can I eliminate? And some things you may not be able to eliminate immediately. It's a, it could be a process, but go ahead and decide this has got to go. This has got to go for me. It's got to go for my family or it's not going to work in my business either. Um, the next one is the magic question, and that is ask yourself, what is not working for me right now? Um, and this could change every single day. So I ask myself mm -hmm. this every time I feel frustrated or stuck, I say, what is not working for me right now? And I just wait for the answer. And is, it could that, be, is your answer normally something that's like external or is it normally mm -hmm. an internal expectation or something internal that's not working? What do you find? It's usually external, like something okay. as simple as my bedtime is not working for me. Gotcha. It's not working. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm waking up tired. Yeah. Okay. Well, my bedtime needs to change. And there's a trickle down. So if I need to get in bed earlier, then that means my kids need to get in bed earlier. Yes, that means we need to right. start bedtime earlier. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So sometimes it's that. Sometimes it's, this is a real simple one, but like a week ago, I, I was frustrated in the morning getting dressed and normally we get frustrated about our kids you know getting ready it was me and what's not working for me is that i have either too many clothes or clothes that don't fit or something mm -hmm. is yeah. something is going on in my closet and that's not working for me <laughs> i also so, said that i go in there something is going on yes. in here my yes. husband and i laugh we go in and we come out of our closet and we're just like the darn dryer has shrunk all of our clothing <laughs> that's right. our joke. we're like it's the dryer's fault. It has shrunk all of our clothes. It's not exactly. the fact that we keep eating Chick-fil-A. No, that's not no, it. That's nothing to do with it. No, no, no. It no, is the not. dryer. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Just identify what's not working and making what's not practical working? little changes. Yes, it could be big. It could be a relationship that's mm -hmm. not working for you. It could be a hard conversation that you have to have. Yeah. Um, somebody that works for you isn't working. Um, there's just a number of things that could be. So anytime you feel resistance in life, internally, externally, ask that question, what is not working? Get curious. Don't be afraid of asking that question. And the last thing to combat exhaustion is we do this, we hear about it all the time, but really to detox from technology. Um, I would recommend like an hour every day away from your phone. Like just literally do not disturb or shut it off for one quiet hour every single day. Um, and then like one day a week, maybe it's during the weekend when, it, when you're with your family, you're trying to be more intentional about that time or just it's whatever. I, one day a week. Um, and then I've even, I know people that do extended periods of time. Uh, it's not uncommon for people to say I'm, I'm getting off of social media for indefinitely. We see that all the time, right? And you've yeah. probably done it. I've done it, you know, but what happens? You get back on and you think like, oh man, that was such a great break. And then you come back, but you don't have any rules. So yeah. if you're going to do that, when you come back, you have to have new rules for how you manage technology because I, I don't know any research on this. I haven't looked into it. I don't have to because I know how it has affected me. Mm -hmm. It is a huge culprit to overwhelm, exhaustion, and certainly decision fatigue because we have no idea 
how to process the information that we are overwhelmed by every single day. So I think between naming your core values, ruthlessly eliminating things, asking the magic question, and detoxing from technology, those four things were huge, a huge shift for me and um, helping me to not just Again, it's, it wasn't, a, it's not a, we're not looking for a exhaustion quick fix, like a nap. We're looking for a life rest as a lifestyle. How do we cultivate rest as a lifestyle? And um, I think that it is as simple as making those four things a top priority. Oh, I love it. Those are so good and so practical. And I love the piece that you said about the core values is making sure you put them up. You write them down and yep. you make them visible. And I think you can do that with each of those four things. Um, yes, you know, and writing them down, what your rules are for ongoing lifestyle of technology. Mm -hmm. What is, mm -hmm. what are you letting go? So you don't pick yeah. it back up. Um, you know, Absolutely. and, and I put the phrase I use is get in mama bear protection mode. So mm -hmm. if you see something as moms, if we see something threatening the life and the goodness of our children, we are going to go at it like a mama Absolutely. bear. And so sometimes we have to be, give ourselves permission to do that for ourselves and get mm, in mama right. bear protection mode of our health and our well being, and our joy and our peace and our productivity and our family time and our relationship time, all the things that exhaustion and weariness and burnout threaten and yes. can, can steal, kill, and destroy from us that we just have to get in mama bear protection mode. So writing these things out, those four steps, those four things, making it visible in your home office, in your closet, on your bathroom mirror so that you can be in mama bear protection mode of your peace. And so you right. can keep doing Absolutely. all the things that God's called and created you to do. And this conversation has made me think of Matthew 11, where, um, the verse says, come to me, all you who labor and are weary, and I will give yes. you rest. And all of these things open up the door to allow space for God's rest and right. not striving and being and doing all he's created us to be. Well, Sarah, thank you right. so much for joining us. I've so appreciated mm. this and I can't wait. We're going oh, to jump joy. back on for episode awesome. two, but so appreciated it. Thank you, well, Tiffany. Well, friends, that's another episode of All the Things TV. I'm Tiffany Jo Baker, helping you fuel and fulfill your faith journey through the ups and the downs. Now go do all the things you were created to do with the grace and the gifts that God's given you.